Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Elvis Popchev. I'm a Senior Solutions Architect here at AWS. Thank you for joining me today. Today's session, we're going to look at VMware Cloud on AWS, and specifically two AWS native services you're able to use or utilize from VMware Cloud on AWS. The first thing we want to look at is your customer virtual private cloud environment. This is typically where you deploy your customer managed VMware or AWS workloads. You would set up your security rules, your connectivity, EC2 instances, and so forth. When we do this deployment, we encourage customers to deploy across two availability zones. This ensures high availability and durability of your workloads that you might run within this environment. From there, we want to make sure the customer deploys two private subnets. This is on one availability zone, and then you'll see the same type of private subnet in your secondary availability zones. Let's take a look at VMware Cloud on AWS. When we deploy VMware Cloud on AWS, there are three main components that get deployed. We encourage you to look at some of our other videos and sessions that dive deeper into each component. The three main components are vSphere, NSX for networking, and vSAN. When this gets deployed, NSX deploys an NSX T0, as you can see. NSX T0 is your main router into your SDDC. From there, you have two main gateways that get deployed. One is your management gateway, and the other one is your compute gateway. What the differences are, your management gateway is where all of your SDDC management VMs to get deployed, such as vCenter, NSX Manager, and any other add-on services such as Site Recovery or HCX that get deployed within this subnet. The Compute Gateway, however, is where you would actually deploy all of your workloads, such as web servers, SQL servers, applications, desktops even. Once this is deployed, the SDDC deploys what's called an Elastic Network Interface, or ENI, between each of the hosts in your SDDC to your customer VPC that you provisioned. Now, there's only one active ENI connection at any given time, providing you a connectivity of at least 25 gigabits per second between your SDDC to your customer VPC. There's a private link between the two environments, and typically, it is a requirement that the SDDC and your availability zone are in the same availability zone. And this is typically done during provisioning of your SDDC. Now, these are two environments. You may ask, well, is this secure? We'll get into that in just a second. What we want to do is go back to your customer VPC. There's one thing in here that controls your security or your firewall rules. This is called a security group, or you might see it as SG. This is what configures what's allowed to traffic into your environment within your customer VPC. SG, SGs are actually configured on each ENI. So you're able to actually go into that security group and allow the subnets from your software defined data center to connect into your VPC. And you can even specify certain ports or services that you want to allow in. On the same side on the SDDC, on the NSX itself, you're actually able to go into NSX Manager and actually set up the firewall rules to allow your customer private subnets to go over your ENI into your SDDC and specific ports that you want to allow. In the case of today's discussion, we're going to look at two AWS services. One is FSX for Windows. And the other is AWS Directory Services. The first is Directory Services. This is AWS Managed Environment. That's why you can see there's actually a separate virtual private cl cloud environment that is actually set up to manage your directory services. Directory services is a managed service, so this takes the heavy lifting off of your organization. So we manage the operating system, the underlying operating system, the maintenance of the compute underneath it, while you maintain and manage the Active Directory 
or LDAP service that you deploy. During this deployment, you do have the option to deploy a full Active Directory, a simple directory service, or even an AD connector. For this scenario, we're going to actually deploy a full Active Directory deployment. During that wizard, when directory services is starting that provisioning process, it actually gives you the option to deploy across multiple availability zones. This is encouraged, again, to ensure you have high availability for the service. Now, one thing you'll notice is that you have some additional ENIs that appear. This allows the connectivity between your managed AWS service to go into your private subnet itself on both availability zones. The next step is FSx for Windows. You may ask, what is this? Well, FSx for Windows is a Windows file service that is fully managed by AWS. Now, there is a shared responsibility where you'll manage the actual provisioning of the storage, how much you want, what the structure of it is, the access to those folders and shares. That is your responsibility. But AWS actually manages the underlying service itself, just like your directory services FSx will actually get deployed and managed that way. So AWS Managed FSx for Windows actually gets deployed in availability zone. Again, through the wizard, you do have the option to deploy across multiple availability zones, which is highly recommended. In the same context as that, you'll see that you have an additional ENI that gets deployed. This ensures that the FSx is able to communicate directly into your private subnets. One additional thing to note is that both your directory services and your FSx service both get actual private subnet IP addresses that you deployed in your private subnet on both availability zones. This ensures you have proper routing between any of your workloads in your customer VPC to those services as well as to workloads that are running in VMware Cloud and AWS. Now, the way to ensure that you have proper connectivity to these services that you've deployed now is to make sure you have your security group set up to allow those ports. Remember that directory services at least requires 389, 553 as well for DNS, and the additional services and TCP ports and UDP ports are available on our documentation on our website. We encourage you to take a look at that. Once you have all the firewall rules set up on the NSX and your security groups, the traffic will, allow, will be allowed across that ENI and that low latency connection between the two environments. Now your workloads will be able to access these services over that ENI. That's it for today's session. Thank you for joining me. We encourage you to look at some of our other videos on other topics that we might have that might interest you. Thank you again.